Hi everybody, my name is Jack Coleman. This is my wife Debbie Coleman. We have Coleman's Christmas Tree Farm in Odessa, Delaware. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about our tree farm a little bit and I'm going to read a book about how Christmas trees are grown. Uh, we're a member of the Delaware Farm Bureau and also the Delaware Christmas Tree Growers Association. Hi kids, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the Christmas tree business today and I'm going to be reading to you from a book called Christmas Farms. And uh, my reading might not be as well as it ought to be, but you'll have to put up with it. Wel Wilma grown petunias and sunflowers for years. She was ready to graduate to something else, but she couldn't decide what. Sunflowers are pretty good size. When snow fell on the last sunflower stock, Wilma still didn't know how to make her garden different next year. And now there was Christmas to think of. On her back hill, Wilma had looked in July for the right tree to cut in December. Her Christmas began when she went for one of the she had chosen and bought it home to her parlor. parlor. But before she wrapped the green branches and lights, she thought of people who had no back hill. Where would they find such a tree? Then Wilma knew. She knew what to plant instead of petunias. She needed a shovel, string, scissors, thyme. She needed good brown earth. She had them all. So Wilma ordered 60, 62 dozen small starts of balsam fir spring for the spring. She was pretty good at counting by dozens. Then she made donuts and Saturday, on Saturday morning she had always made a dozen, but 62 dozen was a lot of trees. She would need help setting them out. You know, she had a lot of trees and 62 dozen. We planted 8,000 last year here on the farm. So, but we do it a little different than Wilma. Parker lived next door. He was five, like the seedlings. Every 4th of July, Wilma and Parker made a parade waving flags and banging on pots and pans at Halloween, they made jack-o'-lanterns. Parker had helped Wilma grow sunflowers. He would help again. As soon as the ground was warm, Wilma and Parker began. Using balls of string, they measured 24 straight rows. Then they dug 62 dozen holes, and they planted 62 dozen trees, 744 trees. That's a lot of trees to plant by hand. We plant our trees with a a planter that goes behind a tractor so we could plant them a lot faster than that. Most people that have a lot of trees to plant use a mechanical planter. Will they be ready by Christmas? asked Parker. No, said Wilma. The trees had to grow through the summer, the fall, the winter, the spring, and then they had to grow some more. While they grew, Parker told, told the trees about Christmas. He knew all about Christmas. Actually, trees take usually about eight to 10 years to grow. So it's a long time before you get a Christmas tree. To keep the grass from covering their trees, he and Wilma weeded around each one. That's all right for a small operation, but when you get 100 acres of trees, you can't do that. We have to use sprays to keep the grass and weeds down. Then October leaves blew across the trees and November snow began to fall. Before winter's end, some of the trees were lost to mice that ate their stems and roots, but 719 remained. If you get too, many tr too much grass around the trees, that's what draws the mice in there, and then they'll eat the bark on the little seedlings. These seedlings are, are small, they're only less than a foot tall. The young trees woke up in the spring. Again, Wilma and Parker weeded around them. Parker told them things. Now he was six. He knew even more than when he was five. On summer nights, brown moss fluttered along the trees. Fireflies flickered above them and whip poor wills called across the darkness. Then fall came again and winter. During the long cold months, some of the trees were lost to deer that dug in the snow to chew the sweet green tips. But 600 73 survived. Sometimes you do have deer damage. Around here, 
they don't so much eat them as they do rub on them to take the velvet off their antlers. When Parker came to help with spring chores, Wilma and him, Wilma had been shopping for a tractor. She chose a blue one with a horn. Though there was nothing to honk except the sky and the ring of mountains, yellow dandelions and Parker. Wilma let him try the horn. Parker would have liked to drive the tractor too, but Seven wasn't old enough for that. The trees weren't old enough either. When Christmas came, they were still too small to cut, so they slept through another winter. Again, some were lost to the mice and deer, storm and ice, but when spring came, there were 652 left. Wilma mowed, Parker ran among the trees counting. 652 was a big number to count, but Parker could do it now that he was eight. All summer, bobolinks decorated the trees with song. Then fall came, winter came, snow came. Moose cracked some of the branches and chewed on them, but 617 trees survived. Every year you lose a few trees, hopefully not too many. That summer, the trees were nine. It was time to shape them. Wilma and Parker worked together and now he was nine, Parker could reach almost as high as Wilma. Each year you have to shape your Christmas trees to make them look like a real Christmas tree with a pointy top. If you don't do that, your trees don't turn out very well. Some of the trees they left as, branch, as their branches had grown for people who like trees that way. The rest they trimmed round and round for people who liked them that way. Soon the trees would be Christmas trees. Everybody likes a different kind of tree. Some people like them perfectly shaped. Some people like them with branches sticking out so they can hang their ornaments on them better. One more winter, the trees slept under snow. Only two were lost to ice, 11 to moose and seven to deer, but 597 remained. At the end of the summer, they put up a second sign. It said trees for sale. Some people came in August to choose a tree and tag it. Some came in October. More came in November. The most came in December. All month, Wilma and Parker were cutting and carrying and sledding trees and making change from the money box. They sold 356 trees. Then a family who had a Christmas tree lot in the city came and bought another 210, filling their tr big red truck to the top. Those are called wholesale people. Those are the people that in the cities that they'll put up, set up a lot. Some, you know, people in the city, some of them don't want to come out to the farm to get their tree, but they just buy it local in, in town. So the farmer will wholesale some trees to these people to, to sell in the city. At last, it was time for Parker and Wilma to choose their trees. That night, across their yard, Christmas twinkled. Far away too, in rooms they never saw, in places they never knew, 566 trees that Wilma and Parker had grown were light, wore lights and balls and tinsel in their branches, green balsam branches that smelled the sweet smell of Christmas. Back on the hill, 29 trees that weren't chosen began winter again. Parker told them they would go grow tall for the people who wanted tall trees next year. We have people that want great big huge trees sometimes and you wonder where they put them. By spring, new green would appear where each tree had been cut. One tiny sprout would become a new trunk. The trees would grow back on their own, but some sprouts might be crooked. Some might be chewed and there was room in the farm to start more. So one Saturday night, each eating a donut, Wilma and Parker filled out an order for 83 dozen new seedlings. Then they waited for spring. It takes a long time to grow a Christmas tree. It takes 8, 10, 12 years according to what variety you have. So I guess that's it.